And now, after a few words from our sponsors, the news at 8 o'clock. The Savoy Theatre presents, November the 19th, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, in an adaptation by Simon Reed. The Bennet sister haplessly search for love in Jane Austen's ultimate comedy, it is Mr. Darcy who unwittingly finds his match. Mmm, good. It's amazing what soup can do. So many, many reasons it's so, mmm, good. Campbell's. Possibilities. Make it Campbell's instead. Never underestimate the power of soup. Soup is good food. Welcome to our culture and current affairs program. We have a schedule filled with events for you. First of all, our book review of the week. This time, a historiographical account of the origins of Europe. Why the Europeans dominate the world? There has been a lot and lots and lots of explanations. In many cases, that way, they were widely racist, but of course, people are intelligent in everywhere. Why it happened? Uh, Jared Diamond, in his 1995 uh, Pulitzer Prize book, Guns, Germs and, uh, and Steel, let, tell us a few reasons that explain why Europeans could dominate the world. A very convenient geographical situation. It was very, very beneficial for agriculture. The development of, the, of a writing culture. Okay, it's better to remember and to know what everybody, what uh, everybody could do in other in other places or situations. A work remade for agriculture. Another point of view, the kind of animals that were more convenient for domesticating than hypos or zebras that let uh, have food, meat all the year. It's true that mm, this book has been criticized as a geographicist determinism from authors like James Robinson or Dayron Asemogru in his recent bestsellers Why Nation F Failure, but it's a great recommendation for people who try to know why the war is nowadays. I think that everybody should read it. Please don't go away. We'll be back after one message. Get your children involved in sports and exercise after school. They will enjoy having this time with their friends and they will also grow up more healthy. This is a message from the Health and Social Security Department. This week in the international news we have had much discussion about conciliation. What is conciliation? What do people believe should be done about it? Here's our reporter, Susanna O'Toole, interviewing somebody in Piccadilly, London. That will be our interview of the day. Susan? Recently, we had a controversy about conciliation. Conciliation is the ability to combine a life at home and the professional life. Today, we are at Piccadilly Circus asking people about it. Good morning. Would you mind taking a few minutes in answering a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. Okay, we're talking to people about conciliation. So, first question is, do you have any children? Yes, I have got one girl. Lovely. How old is she? She's five. And do you have a job? Yes, I do. I work as shop assistant. How did you manage to work and to take care of your daughter? That's the point. It's so difficult. I leave early in the morning and my husband takes my daughter to school. However, there are some days that I have to call my parents because he changes shifts in the factory. So, does he have a better timetable than you, at least most of days, right? Yes, he does. He has the chance of changing shifts, but not as usual as we would like. And what about the afternoon? In the afternoon, we have a lot of combinations. I imagine you have to deal with your timetable, your husbands and the extra activities, right? Of course, without help, it wouldn't be possible. Twice a week, my parents pick Lily up from school and take her to karate lessons. And what about the other three days? Do you have a chance to pick her up? Does your husband have it? Mm, honestly, it is difficult for me to stay with her in the afternoon. We aren't very well off and I combine two jobs and I'm in a hurry to go from one to another. Right, so money is the reason why you can't spend with your daughter all the time you would like to. Well, that's one of the inconveniences. Which would you think is the other one? The timetable. If the school time was synchronized with work time, everything will be easier. Mm -hmm. Sorry, have you, have you thought about having another baby? Yes, we have discussed several times about that, but we have decided that right now it wouldn't be possible to deal with it. Yeah, well, I see. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you for your time and your words. Thanks a lot. 
This is all from Piccadilly Circus, Sandra Rivas. I return the connection to Capital Radio. Bye! Thank you, Susan. That has certainly left us with some food for thought. Let's now go to our literary section. This week, some thoughts on Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman was a poet born in USA in the 18th century. His poetry reflects human feelings about God, explaining nature can be a fantastic vehicle to communicate with God. He thought human beings didn't need a priest or a church to express their soul's feelings. He said natural elements like leaves of grass, sand, water and beaches are holy places where men can communicate with their spirit and with God. His poems talk about an universal love that is expressed by loving each other without limits. I like this freedom. I think modern society could have this type of ideas in order to build a better world full of peace. Our listeners are invited to join our radio's poetry club. This week we are reading Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We'll be right back after one message. Are you worried about your business and property security? Yes, I am. You are right. Someone broke into my house last week, just last week. Genius Security Agency offers services like bank and commercial guards, security survey and planning, background investigation, hotel and house detective. For more inquiries, just visit the third floor Siam Building, Chicago, or call us in the number 995-436-218. That's 995-436-218. Genius Security Agency. It's secure. Welcome back. It's time for our section Climate and Politics Today. Welcome to our guests. Will you introduce yourselves, please? My name is Martin Eastwood and I work in the Climate Research Center of Washington as a climate expert. Now I am working for the Trump administration. And I have to say that global warming is a big lie. There is no consensus. It's cooling models are reliable. Temp recording is unreliable. It's all that I have to say, and all the scientists confirm this idea. Well, my, my name is Melinda Smith. I am a farmer, and I work in Minnesota. I am a housewife. I got three children. Um, well, to be honest, I don't know which kind of scientists uh, you work with, because as, I, as far as I know, all the scientists, they agree that uh, there is a real threat with the climate change. Uh, I'm not sure, but the Daily Tech le- says that less than half of privacy scientists endorse global warming. Over 31,000 sin- scientists signed the OSM petition project that says there is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide will, in the foreseeable future, cause a catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere. It's all in your mind. It's in my mind. I think if you watch any kind of TV program uh, with about nature, you can see the desertification in, the, in Central America, Texas, for example, and you can see the deforestation, you can see pollution in the air, in the water, uh, we, you can see the, um, that we lost the biodiversity. Our animals and plants are, are disappearing. So I think everybody can see that. I don't see in the same way. It's all in your imagination. Well, and there is another thing. I, I, uh, a cousin of mine, uh, she has got cancer, skin cancer, and everybody agrees that the whole ozone um, layer is the cause is, is the cause cancer of this is nothing cancer. New nowadays, cancer will be with us for the last millions and millions of years. But not the skin cancer. Our grandparents didn't have a uh, skin cancer. In Middle because... Age, there was warmer, the climate was warmer than nowadays. It's a, a big lie that all of you are trying to, to, to contaminate all the population in the United States. I'm not sure what your purpose. To be honest, I am quite sure that all this uh, fuss about not to agree with the Tokyo and Paris agreement is quite a selfish idea because the only thing you want is to get benefits uh, for our our industry, for our companies. And, and for you and for your future jobs, yeah, more jobs. My children. Yeah, the future of your children. And to make America great again, like Donald Trump says. Well, I think it's all your effort and work is a loss of loss of energy and 
it's going to provoke a lot of damage and to hurt uh, the people in the future. It's a big truth and renewables can't provide basilar power. What's the alternative? Please tell me what's the alternative. I think we can um, get uh, advantage of the natural resources to take care of the nature, not as you are doing. I am told that we have a last minute call to the program. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Donald Trump here. It's quite horrible to listen to the crazy wrong communist ideas of that sick mind lady. These ideas that Chinese did in order to make the United States manufacturers not competitive. All the contamination caused by Mexicans. Because of that, we are uh, we are building the, the wall. I'm the greatest job president that uh, all the world ever seen. I'm going to make America, America great again. I'm going to make America great again, more jobs, more money, and I'm not going to sign any agreement. Thank you, Mr. Trump. That's all the time we have for you today. We'll be here again tomorrow at 8 o'clock with the 8 o'clock news. Thank you and goodbye. Hey, Hannah, how do you remove the grease from your pots? Don't you know about Mr. Clean? Mr. Clean gets tough and dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and every room that's in it. Floors or walls, he's so tough he cleans them all. Grime it as and tight he'll do, so your bathroom looks clean as new. Mr. Clean gets tough and stuck and stuff, cleans kitchens in a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and every room that's in it. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, clean, clean. Mr. Clean keeps your home sanitized. Bye, Mr. Clean today.